TV. Yes, I do have my mask on and I'll be taking that off since I'm here, uh, social distancing. But um, in case you need a mask, I found this mask to be really simple to make. This is simply a Swiffer and I took that. And then what I did was I just put a couple of pieces of um, you know tape that you use for painting and that doesn't attach too hard to my hair so I can pull it off. So I wanted to invite you to show us how creative you're getting with your homemade masks. And we're gonna throw a little contest up here. So on Friday, we'd like to see all of your homemade masks. Please post those to this Facebook streaming at Art of TV, Art of the City TV. And we're gonna sweeten the deal by offering this beautiful piece of art, which has been donated by Daniel Ryan, the artist you saw last week. And this is valued at $125. We're gonna be giving this to a lucky winner. So you definitely wanna post your mask up. I thought that would be a good way to start the show. It is going on week four of being sequestered. So it's been a little bit of a tribulation. I don't know how you folks are holding up. I've been getting messages. Some people are feeling a little melancholy. Some people are getting a little uh, cabin fever, which is to be expected. I think this is the first time any of us have been contained this long at home ever. So um, hang in there. Today we've got an incredible guest and um, this is someone that has been a personal friend of mine, he and his wife for almost 26 years, if you can believe that. And it's an artist that we really started the whole gallery with 25 years ago. So this is a very special artist. I think that um, probably one of the artists in the gallery that's brought so much joy to our collectors because his work is upbeat and uh, it really just, it brings you to a whole nother place. And a lot of his work is reflective of the islands. You guys know who I'm talking about. It's artist Steve Barton. And a little background on Steve, he is originally from New Hampshire. His mother is an artist. So he kind of like me, my mom's an artist. I didn't get the art gene, but I ended up in the art business. Steve uh, really, you know, got that DNA and he's just a natural born artist. So this is a real pleasure for us to be able to have him on the show today. So I'm gonna see if I can get him on and we'll be able to look at some of his work. I brought a couple of pieces here. This is, Many of you know, Steve is known for these wavy frames. He actually was the um, originator of these, which is an art form all in itself. And recently he has a new sculptural piece here. He's working with some new mediums on wood. So I'll let him share a little bit more about that. But let me see if I can get him and bring him on the show. Give me just a second here. Let's see. And there he is. Can you hear us, Steve? I totally can. How are you guys doing? Good. Good to see you, Steve. Thanks so much for being on the show today. Oh, so super excited about it. Today, I, it's raining outside. Southern California, it's raining. That's a good thing. That washes, purifies everything. I know. But I was going to show you guys my gardens and my other projects that I was working on today. But it's, it's pretty wet down there. Because, you know, I've got a whole chicken garden thing going on now. So, but that's, that's my hobby. So you, are you pretty sustainable then? Are you actually getting eggs? I know the floors, Michael Floor has chickens, but they're, they're not laying eggs yet. So it's going to oh, be a he, while. He probably hasn't talked to him nicely because I get about <laughs> eight eggs a day. I go down there and I talk with them and I give them uh, some vegetables out of my gardens and, and I'm, I'm even getting quail eggs. So I get about a dozen quail eggs a day too. So. Yeah. That's amazing. Well, we know to, where to go. You'll we'll have to get your address. We know where to go to get one Wait, system. No, no. Not that many <laughs> eggs. <laughs> so how are you holding up, Steve? Share with, you know, the viewers. I mean, we have people watching. I'm seeing the streams come through. People have been collecting your artwork from our gallery and other galleries for over 25 years now. It's been quite a while. It's, that's exciting because I, I think I met you when I was 22 and I'm 26 now, I think. <laughs> <laughs> and just a fun fact for those of you uh, watching, we can never forget each other's birthday because we're both December 17th. Yes. So. Uh, yeah, so every time my birthday, we always back and forth messages for the last 20-something years. That's it. Well, 
No, I've been hanging out. I, it's been it's been good. Um, I've gotten caught up on most of my commissions that have always, you know, that's always the thing. Um, getting caught up on those between shows. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, we lost him. I'm sure he'll be jumping right back on. I brought my little thing. You know, when things don't work out the way you like them to, you kind of feel like this. Rawr! Little fun fact for you. I'm sure none of you have been feeling that way with everything going on in your lives. But um, once Steve comes back on, one of the things I was going to ask him was how he was um, handling having his grandkids there all the time, because I know both Steve and Deborah are just incredible grandparents. And Steve is does a lot with his grandkids. That's okay. I just brought up my little guy here. Let me bring you back in. Here he is. I was just saying, this is my new mode nice. of frustration right there. <laughs> I don't know why my my studio is just dropping constantly right now, my internet over here. So, Probably because everybody's on the internet. I'm sure that's what it is. Yeah. I was sharing with the folks when you went away, your grandparent, which is amazing. How has yes. it been with the kids? How, how are the kids doing and keeping them engaged? I haven't, haven't even seen them in about a month right now. I mean, because okay. they're equestered at their house. And, but I talked to them FaceTime, which I'm used to doing anyway, because of, you know, when I travel a lot. Um, but yeah, it's, it's been a little different. Um, so they haven't been over here. So which wow. has been kind of hard for me. Yeah, I bet. Cause you guys are so engaged. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I usually see them at least twice a week when they're around when I'm home. Right. And the yeah. night twice a week. So <laughs> That's I'll right. give you guys a little tour. Of my okay. I'm going to minimize my screen so we can really take a look at what you've got going on there. See. So, well, uh, here's a new wood piece that I just got sanded. I and mean, I was talking about the graft line and stuff like that in there, which mm-hmm. is really kind of cool. Um, here, I'll just kind of pan you around the studio. Um, there's like one of my little setups. So what I've done personally is I have different setups for different things that I'm working on. So here's like the surfboard setup and I have that going on and, and all set up there. And then there's another spot with another surfboard I have set up and then some, I put them on walls. I got these rolling walls that I hang things on to look at them to see what they're going to look like in galleries and stuff. Great idea. I think we're going to have probably a um, in and out with Steve here because I know everybody's streaming and we did a little test run earlier today and we kind of were dropping in and out during that time. But um, once we get him back on, the one thing that I really wanted to share about Steve's work is how it's evolved over time because at one point we're going to get him back now. I think you got to turn your camera though. You're uh, sideways. Yeah, I'm sideways. <laughs> yeah, there we go. There. We got you now. I was uh, just talking well, about the avalanche. That. That's well, okay. I was just... the most, most yeah, important okay. part of the studio, right? Yeah, there. let me minimize myself again. So at least I have my coffee bar open. Very important. <laughs> and then, so here's my little section where I paint and my little where I rotate through and a couple new pieces that I've been working on up there. And then I don't know if we can be able to do this, but I was going to do a little demonstration for you and paint a quick palm tree. That would be great. Chatting. Um, let me see if I could get this to work. Let me flip you around here. Um, oh, here's my new dog. Oh, so cute. That's Mona Lisa, Princess Mona Lisa. She's looking a little ragged because she was out there running in the rain, but there you go. Oh, <laughs> we love dogs. So let me see if I can switch this over. Switch. Come on. There we go. So let's see if I can do this. Okay, I'm going to take myself off the screen here. Uh, let's see if that'll work. So hopefully I can get this done before my internet drops again. So, well, this is how I start all my paintings, um, is I 
just kind of look through and figure out what I want to do. And like right now, I'm just going to do a quick little painting of the water here. Now I'm going to go with a little bit bigger brush. The old Bob Ross technique. So, but this is, I kind of have fun doing these um, quick little study sketches. Um, and my other hobbies are, like I said, I'm doing my gardens and stuff like that right now. And it's given me a little bit of time to do those things that I've been home for so long. And especially training with my new puppy and stuff. So and I'm trying to get her trained because she's, she's about six months right now. So she's a pretty good size um, girl there. Um, and we just want to make her well behaved. I think I brought her to that one show that we had that the artist show down at your place when she was a little girl. Now she's about 50 something pounds. Hope you guys can see me okay. We can see you, you look great. I'm gonna just okay. minimize here. All Whoop, right. Another way around. Okay, we got it. So Steve, didn't you have quite a, I mean, this is a really big season for you, especially in Florida. I know your works are shown in Florida and Hawaii. How I've already canceled 10 shows. Oh my goodness. So yeah, for me it's been, because this has been the time of the year that I'm usually out there working a lot. Um, I missed my whole Florida season right now. And um, then Hawaii, I was supposed to be in Hawaii doing all the islands. I should have just gotten back last week. Um, I was going to be a month in Hawaii working, but um, I'm actually glad I didn't go because I probably would have been caught over there where I couldn't get back over here. Right. So that has got to be really, you know, how do you keep your spirits up when these things are happening? I mean, everybody's been affected at some level. And, you know, everything's come to such a screeching halt. How do you, as an artist, keep yourself motivated? I know you probably have artwork that was going to be shipped out. So to stay motivated, to keep creative, um, you know, how do you, how do you uh, manage that? It's, it's been a struggle for me. Um, but I've done a lot of um, painting class live and taught people how to paint palm trees and stuff like that that keeps me motivated. Um, also, uh, you know, just doing it, you know, because I always feel better once I start painting. Uh, if I start thinking about everything too much, um, I won't paint. Um, but if I go straight out to the studio and start painting, it's so much better for me. And it makes me happy because I, I love what I do. Um, so the idea of just starting every day. Um, and that's why I have my coffee machine out here because it for oh there he goes <laughs> i was just really enjoying what he was saying and i'm sure i see all of the uh the feeds coming through um you know just so you folks know i've worked with artists for almost 30 years now and you know they're they're a different breed in in some regards probably more sensitive because they see the world from a, a completely different point of view in order to pull that in and then create what they do uh, but they're like us, you know, they have to, you know, their work, they have to be disciplined. They have to get up every day, especially if they're painting for a show, which a lot of them, they have a show schedule. There's a lot of demands put on artists. And, you know, so they are always working in advance. They're always planning on this next big show that they have coming up. And when this type of a thing happens, they don't have the outlet for those paintings. It's really... Um, you know, it really takes a special individual to remain motivated. So that's what, you know, I'm, I was kind of wanting to hear from Steve, bringing him back on. Okay, there you are. Sorry about that. It just keeps You know, we've got, we've got everybody on the planet on the internet right now. So I'm not surprised, but we'll just keep, yeah. we'll, we'll keep bringing you back in. So Steve, you're on a roll. You were sharing with us about how you stay motivated in these times. Well, and for me, it's, 
it's just to get started. It's, it's literally to start painting. Um, and then I get motivated as I go through. So these I, I do really quickly. I got a stack of them I've been doing. And so I'll probably be doing something with them. I'll have a show on things of paper of the last 30 days. Cause I do one every morning I get up and I start one. Um, and so that's, that's what I've been doing to get started. And then that rolls into other things. Um, my, my wood pieces. Um, so earlier today, actually, I started playing with this because I sanded this yesterday. And, and this is actually an olive tree that I got. Wow. Where did you olive get that? Tree. I actually got this out in Anza. Um, and so I drove out to this mill out there and they have an olive tree and I got a slice out of it. It's amazing because you can see all the grain patterns in it um, Beautiful. and the unique shape. So that was one piece that I, and for me, it's, it might be sanding. It might be sanding a piece of wood and then looking at it and seeing what I can add to the beautiful nature of it. Um, and that's why I call those collaborations with nature because I'm collaborating with what's already there and not painting over everything. But like I said, just painting, um, and then also, for me, I, I've been having a lot of good times watching things grow in my garden. No matter what happens in the world, if you plant something, it should grow. Um, if you do it right and you spend some time with it. Um, and that's kind of how I look at painting is I plant, like today, we're planting seeds of maybe no one's ever seen the inside of an art studio before. Right. So maybe that will grow into a fascination to wanting to see more and to, to get a painting or whatever it is. It's, it's planting seeds and watching them grow. Um, and that's why. Where did he go? Hold on. Bring myself back up, maybe. There we go. So this is, um, this is like hide and go seek here with the internet. But what he was sharing, I think, was profound, you know, just talking about how, you know, constantly um, looking at the positive. Okay, we got him back again. Just takes a second. All right, there you are. I, like I said, I'm not quite sure what's happening, but... Um, That's okay, well, we're going to just keep having you come back on because you're right in the middle of this amazing thought process. You're talking about your garden. Yeah, so with, with my gardening and... It's, it's just watching the seeds grow and it's, and I, obviously it takes a little bit more patience than a, a painting for me because paintings, I'm fast and furious and I can push it in one direction or another and add colors and do these there. I just have to watch. There's no, I, I'm not in control of the situation. I can do whatever I can. I can add water, add fertilizer, make sure everything is done right, but I got no control if the seed's going to sprout or not. And it's, it's kind of humbling to watch you plant a hundred little seeds and only 20 of them sprout. Um, mm -hmm. And then other trays where they all sprout and they take off. Mm -hmm. And then you just have to nurture the, the little seedling. And, and I was, I was kind of excited to share you guys that today, but I don't think I'm going to make it down there with my internet. Um, well, we'll have you back on, on, on a sunny day for sure. And you can show I mean, us again. Yeah. And so, but that's, kind of the whole philosophy with painting and everything is is you just take what you can do and, and work with it and have fun with it and watch it and do what you can with it. And that's all we can do today too. I know we can't do much. Uh, we're all home. So we have to figure out something to enjoy. And for me, I'm enjoying what I can and I'm having a wonderful time doing it because, um, it's been great. And then when the internet's on, I can actually FaceTime with people and my collectors that I've been finishing their commissions and they actually get to watch me paint. And that's great. The process. So, and that's, that's been a lot of fun because normally I don't have time to sit there for two or three hours with a client and chat and FaceTime and go back and forth and really let. This may have something to do with the fact that, let's see if I can bring myself back on here. There, whoop. This may have something to do with the rain here in Southern California too and it cutting in and out. 
But one of the things that Steve just said that I thought was so profound was just talking about the fact that we don't really have a whole lot of control, including this internet that we're dealing with today, um, on just the things in our lives, but we still nurture ourselves. And I think that that's the beauty of art. That's the beauty of these creators is like you, I myself, I'm a collector, I've collected art. And when I go home, that's one of the bright spots in my day. Every single day, I see these different pieces that I've collected. And I think now more than ever, even as an art dealer, I'm taking the time to really stop and appreciate each piece individually because I have the time to do that. And it's really been a light in some kind of troubling times. And the artwork is going to be there forever, even when we're not there. But I just got Steve back on. Are you there? Let me see if I can get you back here. For some reason, your camera is not coming on. There you are. Okay. Am I back? You're back. Can you hear me? I can hear you. Let's see here. Hello? Yep, you're you're back, yes. but I'm not. Let's see. <laughs> Let's see what we've got here. I think it's back. You're back. <laughs> For a minute anyway. So Yeah, you're definitely back. I'm not on, but we'll see uh, what, what's going on here. I, I think because it's raining and we're not used to it raining in California. I think that might be it. Um so yeah. But it, I was just saying, you know, I before I went off, I it just art's food for the soul. Uh, it makes you feel better in life. And for me personally, doing art makes me feel better and enjoying other pieces that I have from other artists, you know, really en the enjoyment aspect is just over the top. Um, you can see, actually, I have a top shelf of my studio paintings that other artists have done when they've hung out in my studio. So, yeah. well, then from here, it's just, I'm paying a fun little palm tree yeah i can hear you i'm trying to there we are okay i'm back You're sorry back for, yeah a yeah. little interference i think we'll keep us both on the screen just to be on the safe side so we don't keep cutting out but oh, um yeah. steve your work is profound i just had a couple questions for you one okay. is um i know that you have devoted you you do a lot of you can paint anything but you've oh, devoted a big portion of your genre to these tropical pieces. Where, where did that come from? And I mean, it's brought so many people joy, including myself. What was the idea behind that? Well, the palm tree started when I moved to California from New Hampshire. I, mm -hmm. I grew up back East um, and I actually grew up on a little small farm. And then when I moved to California, when I was 22, the sound of a palm tree just fascinated me. Um, so that's kind of how the first palm tree started. Got and it. Okay. It was just because I painted New England landscapes growing up. That's what I did. Covered bridges, um, foliage scenes, still bright colors, um, but not quite as bright. And then watch the light come through the leaves was, was fascinating for me. So I did one and people liked it. And then I did two and I got fascinated with just, dissecting pieces of palm trees and it just went from there. And then I always wanted to paint places where you want to be places, you know, that you disappear to so that you look at it on the wall and I'm like, Oh, you can go there and sit in those Adirondack chairs and just want to be home no matter where home is or to, to have escape from there to go there. And so that's, that's, That's kind great. of the direction I always painted. Um, well, that reminds me, we had a collector who lives in Manhattan, and he said, you know, you don't get much there, and I'm losing Steve, but we had this collector. He said, you know, you don't get much for your money at this very small apartment in Manhattan, and he said he, he hardly had any windows, 
Um, but he bought three of Steve's pieces and he said, you know, the reason why I really want to have these is because this is my beachfront property. He said, every night I come home from Wall Street and I feel like I'm back in Hawaii or California or Florida or wherever he would, you know, work hard to be able to go on vacation. So I thought that was really kind of a cool thing. It's like those are, those paintings were his windows to his beachfront property. And I was just sharing that, Steve. I got Steve back here. It's okay. We do the best we have with uh, what we've got, right? So I was just sharing with the folks about that uh, gentleman in Manhattan. I think you met down in La Jolla many years ago who collected three of your pieces. And those were his windows because he had a very small place. And that was, he said, that was his beachfront property. And I thought that was really cool. Yeah, you know, and I love hearing stories like that. And, and yeah, that was how many years? That was quite a few years ago. Twenty-five years ago. Well, this is our twenty-five year anniversary of exclusive collections. Wow! How exciting! So, it's very exciting. And there's, you know, this has probably been the strangest event I think for any of us. We can put this down in our our journals that when you know years pass and we're looking back at this, but. Um, we definitely weathered some storms and, you know, keep in mind the art world, um, you know, it can be good. It can be difficult. If you're an artist like Steve, Michael, these artists we're bringing on the show, you can know that these folks have devoted their lives to art because of the passion that they have for creating. It's uh, definitely not the easiest um, job to have, if you will. But um, that passion, I think, will surpass their lives and certainly all of us with our collections. That's the one thing that we know that will go on when we're not here anymore. And I think that is the beauty of art is that historical essence that it brings to the world. Um, but Steve, I was going to ask you now, on some of these commissions, are these personalized? Can people commission you to do things specific for them? And how does that work? Oh, absolutely. So what I've been doing a lot of is people will give me ideas like or send me pictures of their vehicles um, <laughs> and put them on the beach with a, a setting. They're like, I really like. a. I think we lost Steve again, but um, I want to hear more about these commissions because I know he's been so busy. We've taken a couple of commissions. We um, normally we've had commissions like, for instance, of this piece here where people will have their favorite beach, they'll send photos and sometimes he'll put initials of the folks that go certain places and hopefully we'll get him back on and we can share about that. I was just sharing with the folks, you know, the commissions we've taken have been of specific beaches or people will want their initials. I know you do other customizations within your work. Yeah, I'll do a customizations. I'll paint people's beloved animals in there. Um, I'll do all kinds of different things. What I do is I just, whatever I can add to the painting to make it personal for you, that looks like it belongs in the painting. Um, I've painted custom surfboards where it's actually their surf scene that they've actually surfed that board in. Um, so I've done that, put people's homes in paintings, but blend them into something else. Um, I did this Chicago cityscape going to he retired and he was moving to Hawaii so on one side of the board was a Chicago cityscape and then the other side was this in the middle was this boat sailing across to a tropical island how cool so I've done that for people um so whatever you can kind of think of and, and we can morph it into something exciting and fun for both of us to paint you know and I say that paint with you because the collector is literally painting with me They're, I mean, it's, they're, they're looking through and going, okay, I like this color. I like this color and I'll show them how to use that color. And it'll wow. be on the piece. So they're, they're kind of an art director, which has been a, a lot of fun. And I'll explain to them, I'll be like, oh, that won't work. <laughs> we won't be able to do that that way because of this. And then, but other times I'm like, oh, if we do that, we'll just do it over here and we'll bounce the colors back and forth. And so, you know, um, I've been so doing cool. commissions for 20 something years and um, most people 
99.9% of everyone has, has loved them so far. I mean, but there's always one or two throughout the year. That's awesome. My, um, my brother-in-law and my sister actually had a piece commissioned of their favorite beach, which is Swami's. And they had the kids' initials put in um, into the path there, kind of walking down. So um, I really thought that was a gorgeous commission. And there's very few artists out there that have the temperament like Steve does, that he will actually spend the time creating something. So it's almost a collaborative between the patron and the artist. And I think that's very special. So he has time right now. This is a really great opportunity if any of you, and you can go small, you can, you know, whatever, whatever you, you feel that you can, you know, put into your budget, he can work with you on that. So that would be a really great thing. If you're interested, just uh, private message me or just go to our website. Um, you can put in a thing at, I think it's art at ecgallery.com. So if you're interested in that, I don't know folks, if we're going to be able to get him back, but um, hopefully we will. Oh, here he is. And we'll kind of wrap it up here. All right, Steve. All right. Sorry I, was about just all sharing, this you know, I was just sharing about this collaborative. So you have a little bit of time now. We obviously want to support your efforts as an artist. Um, is there specific, I said, you know, you have smaller sizes, you know, just, it really just depends on, um, I guess the subject matter. It, it does. It's mostly on size. Um, and usually there's a, an upcharge for commissions because it's so interactive. Um, but I've been waiving all that stuff now. Oh. Where it's just whatever the size is. And we just figure out what, what's, here's the thing is, is I want to paint and I want to make people happy and everything else is totally up for negotiation or interpretation. Yeah. <laughs> you know how it is. Appreciate and that. So, Steve. Yeah. And if someone has an idea or this, you know, and well, I'll just work with whatever they have. And that's what I've been enjoying doing. And, uh, and this is just really giving me the opportunity if you look at the positive side of this to really enjoy collectors and spend a lot more time with them. That's great. And so they can contact us and then we'll, we'll get yeah. you, you can FaceTime with them and we'll get you the information. And by the way, if you're watching this, Steve works with a lot of different galleries. He's worked with us for a long time. He has several different galleries that he works with quite a few, actually. If you're a patron of that gallery, go back to that gallery and have them assist you with this because we want to support all the galleries out there, all the artists that are out there and make sure that um, everybody is doing their best during this uh, difficult, tricky time that we're navigating. Yeah. Well, thank you, Ruthann, for having me on. And I would love to do it again when I got my internet of working a little bit better. Okay. And, uh, Any classes you have coming up? Anything you're promoting? Uh oh, we lost him. Well, I guess we'll find out and we'll post that. So it's a short episode today. We had a couple of other people lined up, but um, I got, you know, I've got um, a couple people that are having a little technical difficulty with their computer. So we need to work on that a little bit. So I appreciate your patience as you're um, tuning in every week, 1 p.m., Art of the City TV, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Very much appreciate it. Remember to show us your masks. I know mine mine is a little silly, and I'm going to bring Steve back in because I know Steve's going to want to participate in this. So, Steve, we're doing a mask contest, and I, I know saw you, that. you're going to pro – I mean, I don't know if we're going to allow you in because you're just <laughs> way too creative, so you'll probably win it for sure. Oh. But um, make sure you send us photos of your masks, um, homemade masks. You can – Take a paper made mask and, you know, decorate it and make it into something fun and submit that as well. But I know Cynthia at home is sewing up masks as we speak. So she may have a little side business going, but uh, bring in your mask. We're, we're offering this Danny Ryan to the winner. And well, I'm, ex um, I'm excited to win that. I'm going to try really hard. <laughs> I knew you would be, Steve. I, I, have, I, I haven't had one of his to add to my collection. so. That's... I know you're like me. You have all different types of art in your house. I've been to your house. Your house. You, you and Deborah are huge art collectors, so it's really great to see that you collect other artists' works as well. 
I've been wanting to get one of his for a while. I've been looking at, I love that bear piece. I might put that in my Tahoe house. So there you well, go. before I cut out, thank you guys so much and be kind and love each other. Thanks for thank Dan. You, Steve. Thank you. Bye-bye. Right. Bye-bye. I know that's how it works. So uh, just post your photos on our, the Facebook page and we'll, We'll be uh, looking at all those and voting. If you see one you like and maybe you don't have one, put your post on there. Uh, the other thing I wanted to mention is, so Wednesday, we have a great lineup. We have Aaron Meyer, who is a internationally renowned violinist who will be playing music for us live from Portland, Oregon. And we have an artist coming all the way from streaming all the way from New Orleans, Molly McGuire, who I think you folks are really gonna love. She actually is also a musician, but she is now doing art full-time and has been for a long time. And then on Friday, we have a um, Caruth Cellars, which is a winemaker here locally. They'll be coming in and sharing a little bit about how to choose wines, certain vintages, giving us a little wine class for those winos like myself. And then we have another amazing artist, uh, Lyman Whitaker, who does these beautiful um, copper sculptures that you've seen outside of our house, or, or I'm thinking house because I've been in my house, in the gallery. So make sure you tune in for that. Again, certificates of authenticity, we're here to help if you need to have anything updated. If you happen to have a wall that needs a piece, and I'm, I'm saying needs because if you got a blank wall, it needs a piece, in my opinion. Take a photo of it and shoot it down line to us, and we'll come up with some ideas. Give us a little budget there. We can work with anything. But um, this is week four. Again, hang in there, folks. Don't go nuts. Don't turn into this guy. And we will see you Wednesday at 1 p.m., Art of the City TV. Thanks for tuning in. Share with your friends, and be blessed. See you soon.